Have you ever made keyhole slots with your CNC? I'm gonna show you a better way to do it today. Stick around. So what we're doing today is creating a keyhole slot for the back of a sign or a plaque so you can hang it on the wall. And the first thing we have to do is create a circle. And it's got to be the same diameter as the cutting head of your bit, your keyhole slot bit. Mine is 3 eighths of an inch diameter, 0.375. So I've already put that in there. I click over here and create that. Close. All right, so there is my dot that I need. Then I'm going to go up here to the gadgets in the menu at the top. Click on that, then you'll go down and you'll see Keyhole Toolpath. Click on that. All right, then you have all kinds of options here. This gadget creates Keyhole Slot Toolpaths. These toolpaths plunge at the entry point, move along at the slot depth, and then remove back to the entry point before retracting. To use the gadget, select one or more vectors, the centers of which represent the entry point of the keyhole. All right, so here are our options down here. You can either do vertical or horizontal. I always do uh, horizontal. You can go left to right, right to left. I have yet to figure out what difference that makes. I just go with the left to right. My depth of slot is 0.375, 3 eighths. I'm using a white side 3050. I'll have the information here on the screen. Um, and it has a 0.375 head diameter and it is designed to cut 0.375 deep. I make my slots one inch. My entry hole diameter, which is what we just created, is 0.375. The slot diameter is 0.1875. That's the width of the slot. Uh, I'm just going to call it Keyhole Preview, Preview Layer Name. And my toolpath name is just going to be Keyhole Toolpath. And here's where I select my bit that I want. And it's this white side keyhole, 3 8 inch. I have all the uh, information here in the notes here in the tool database. And that's always a good idea to do that, especially if you're using a bit that you don't normally use. And I've got my, uh, on the cutting parameters, I got my pass depth set at 0.375, which is the depth it is designed to cut in one pass. And I have my speed set at 20,000. My feed rate is 20 inches per minute. And the plunge rate is 10 inches per minute and that seems to work perfect for me so i'm just going to hit apply and i assigned tool number 86 to that your number will certainly be different i'm going to apply select okay and like magic there is the keyhole slot ain't that cool let me turn it let me check that so you can see so here's your entry going to go in here. It's going to come over and then come back and then raise up out of the uh, board. This is what the uh, tool path looks like. Your start depth is 0.375, 3 eighths of an inch. And that has to be the start depth, not the cut depth. It has to run this in one pass. So we want our pass to be 375 and we got to start it at 0.375. And there's my bit information. So I'm good on all that, close that. So let's just run a quick preview and I'll show you uh, how this thing works. Reset it and I've got the speed turned way down so you can kind of see what's going on. Otherwise it goes really fast. All right, so it enters right here, comes over, and then comes back to the left, and then lifts out. Now, what, what I do, like in this one, this is a 16-inch wide board, 8 inches tall. And I typically, for a smaller sign like that, I'll put my keyhole slot 2 inches in from the edge of the board. So let me put it back in 2D view. I'll show you how I 
come up with that. Just going to double click it, highlights everything. Now you watch up here. So these uh, measurements up here, I always use these and it makes it so easy to get your placement right. So I know I am going in two inches from this edge. So all I have to do is grab this, move it where I want it, and then at the same time, I'll be watching this line right here. And because that indicates where my cursor is. So I'll just stop it right there on two inches. I also want them to be one inch from the top of the board. That board is eight inches high. I want my keyhole slots at seven inches. So what I'll do is just grab it and move it until the line over there on the scale gets to seven inches. So now I know I am centered up. Another important thing to note, when you're setting your horizontal, your X here, how far you want it from the edge, that two inch measurement that I use, that's not two inches from the center of that hole to the edge, it's two inches from the center of the slot to the edge. So now we need two of these keyhole slots. The best way I've found to do this is to create an array. So I'll show you how to do that right quick. Close that out. All right, highlight this. Go over here to the array copy tool path. Click that. And the way I determine my spacing between my keyhole slots is by the length of the board. So mine is 16 inches long in this case. And I'm coming in two inches from this edge, two inches from this edge, so that's four inch total. So 16 inches minus four inches is 12 inch. So I want my the center of my slots to be 12 inches apart. And in order to do that, I just go over here. I'll have one row, which is your X, and two columns, which is your Y. So I'll have one here and one here. They are offset by 12 inches. So I just hit calculate. And then we can preview that. So preview tool pass. So there's the first one. There's the second one. And you'll notice how perfectly these are centered up on that board. They are exactly 12 inches apart from the center. And they are exactly 2 inches from the edge. Okay, now I'm gonna show you an alternate method, which is how I actually do this. Instead of uh, making my keyhole slots up here at the top of the board, I put mine down here at the bottom. And the reason I do that is because I have a fence on my waste board. Therefore, my X, Y never changes. It's always right there in the corner of my fence. And all I have to do is just remember to turn the sign or plaque 180 degrees so the actual top of the sign is at the bottom down there at, at my x y zero so real quick let me change this to the slots down at the bottom and then we'll look at that okay so i've created a new file and uh, i did everything the same except i set my slots down here at the bottom of this board which will, of course, actually be the top of my sign. And the reason I do this is because, let's just say, uh, I have a 16-inch sign that's 4 inches tall instead of 8 inches like this one is. Well, if I had my keyhole slots up here at the top and I had a 4-inch tall board, well, that's not going to work. I would have to move my keyhole slots down here. So by putting them... Down at the bottom, no matter what the height is of my sign, as long as it's 16 inches long, these keyhole slots are going to be in the right place. Uh, and that's the beauty of doing it this way. Uh, I, I'll never have to redo this. All 16-inch signs that I make from here on out will use this, uh, this tool pad board. So that's why I do that. It's just a time saver. And uh, so anyway, but either way you do it, you're going to be okay. 
uh, as long as you do either one of these methods, you should never have any problem at all uh, with your keyhole slots. So now I'm going to send this file over to the Masso, and then we'll look at it over there. All right, I've got my toolpath loaded here on the Masso. So first thing I need to do is go to my jog probing and turn on my G55 off, offset. That's always the first thing I do when I start up my machine. So I've got that set. So now my XY is at the corner of my fence like I talked about earlier. I've already honed my machine. So let's just go here. I need to set my Z because the XY takes care of itself. So let's do that. Now, probe right there. That's it. That's the extent of my measuring. So now all I've got to do is go to program MDI F2, go to work origin, which is right here on the corner, rewind, cycle start. that out. We'll take a look at it. Perfection. And there you go, the finished product. So easy, even a caveman can do it. And now I have a special little gift for my channel members, uh, not subscribers, just the members. If you're a paying member of this channel, uh, you qualify to get a free three inch logo sticker i just recently had these made and uh all you have to do to get one if you're a member is send me email me at mitchellswoodwork at gmail.com include your name address and also your youtube screen name so i'll know you're really a member y'all sneaky like that i know but if you are not a member yet and you would like to get one of these all you have to do is join any level you'll automatically qualify to get one so uh, keep that in mind because that's pretty cool and there are other perks too you can check those out by clicking on the join link below this video now one other thing i want to talk about is the fence that i have on my wasteboard if you don't have a fence on your wasteboard you're really missing out and things could be so much easier for you uh, I have a video on how I made mine with complete step-by-step -step instructions, including how to set your G offset in order to use the fence properly. If you're interested in that, I got a link to that video right up here. So y'all be sure to check that out. Let me know what you think about it. And if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I always reply to those. So that's it for this one. Till next time, y'all take care.